Okay, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for joining us for another one of our virtual Lunch and Learns uh, today. Uh, I'm going to be presenting Richard Restucia, the uh, Vice President of Water Management Solutions at Jane Irrigation. I'm going to be presenting on increasing margins with ET Water Termic Crab and Jane Unity software. I want to thank everybody for joining us today, and I also want to say uh, hello to uh, Kevin Hepperin. Uh, Kevin is our uh, be our um, director of marketing for ET Water and uh, having somebody have my back today in the production side and uh, managing the questions, uh, somebody with the capabilities of Kevin is really uh, reassuring. So uh, Kevin, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Richard. Thank you very much for having me today. Good afternoon, everyone. And I would just uh, say, just if you, uh, this is, we like to keep these uh, interactive to the extent that if uh, you hear something as Richard's talking about the hermit crab, uh, please, by all means, um, ask a question on chat. I'll be monitoring ch chat in that, and then uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, alert Richard in that to, to questions. So thank you. All right, great. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, and again, thank you all for joining us today. You know, um, today, it's kind of an interesting discussion because uh, I'm going to be taking a break from water conservation today to talk about uh, contractor uh, profitability. Now, for those of you who heard me talk a lot about water, water conservation, many of you are on um, right now, but I did hear a collective sigh, right? Uh, push that water conservation message pretty hard. But um, today in particular, uh, and because of the time of the season, I think it's really important to talk about um, contractor profitability, right? Coming into the summer, and I often say, you know, live the summer until you've lived it as a uh, landscape maintenance contractor. Um, you know, uh, the pressures from the customers are really hard. Uh, we've got people, customers always trying to grind us down on pricing and profitability, and, and, and that hurts our margins. That hurts our profitability. We get other landscapers that come in and try to take jobs, maybe, uh, uh, we'll ball some of our accounts depending on and, and once again, I understand it right they, they want to keep their their crews busy They want to keep people working, but at the same time, you know, it makes it tough for the industry So and then this year even to make it just a little tougher on us, right? What else can you throw at me? Uh, we have to add uh, COVID or a, uh, uh, a Worldwide pandemic so uh, if if <laughs> If, uh, if you've seen a lot over your career, you know, this year would be uh, uh, one, of the, one of the tougher ones. So, but I did want to mention a couple things, you know, to give everybody a little bit of hope on this. And uh, the first thing I wanted to mention was, um, you know, I started at Valley Crest back in 2008, and uh, we were just starting the uh, great uh, U.S. Uh, recession at that time, you know, 2008, 2009. And so um, one thing I wanted to tell you was that uh, we re drove our maintenance business and increased it at a record pace at that time, uh, as well as our water management division. And a lot of, a lot of people say, well, gee, why, why was that, right? Because you know, we're kind of facing a similar time right now. So number one, construction business was going down, right? So a lot of people were shifting work to maintenance. Everybody likes that reoccurring revenue model of uh, the maintenance business. So, uh, so, so that was a, a part of it. And then the other thing that was happening was, uh, you know, customers really wanted to uh, save money. And people started to get a lot more interested in water management from the standpoint of who can save me money on my landscape. And if I'm learning about who can save me money on my landscape uh, water, uh, then maybe I'll have a little bit more money to, uh, to use for my maintenance. So saving money through your, your your management was also giving them the ability to be more competitive. Maybe take a little uh, off, little pressure off that monthly management fee. Um, and then, then the other thing that really is important is that oftentimes the margins we get on irrigation are higher than what we get on maintenance. So. Um, here again, that's why I say maintenance and water management are going to be really important in the next, next few months, particularly. So uh, one of the things we also knew is that with 700 branches across the nation, you know, we had to get really, um, we had to really standardize a lot of our procedures, right? We didn't want everybody doing something different, everybody using a 
type of controller, everybody using a different truck or 15 different lawnmowers that you had to train everybody on how to use. We wanted to standardize to uh, a few manufacturers for uh, different items that we were using regularly. It, it did a couple things for us, right? It, uh, it made it easy to train people. And then once you were trained for one job, uh, you could go to another job and you didn't have to learn something all over again. So once you learned um, an ET water controller, you didn't have to learn a different manufacturer's controller on a different job. And you know, you didn't have to learn 30 or 40 different um, uh, controllers. So this is not unlike, right, what we see some of the other uh, industries doing. And you don't have to be 700 branches, uh, you can, or seven branches. This is going to be true, you know, if you're just uh, operating one branch as well. And that is standardization. You know, one company that I've always admired uh, in the in the U.S. is uh, uh, Southwest Airlines. Uh, this company has been profitable for 47 consecutive years. And uh, one of the reasons they are profitable is because of their standardization. You know, if you look at, at Southwest, they fly all 737 airplanes, Boeing 737. So train the mechanics once, have the uh, parts for just one engine, one airplane, versus what their competitors are doing and their competitors are, are, are flying, you know, regional jets, wide bodies. Uh, they, they have it much more difficult, much harder to train and and keep things consistent branch to branch, uh, job to job. Once again, standardization is big, and uh, that's a little bit about what we're gonna be talking about today. So, um, so again, uh, my first slide here is, you know, what is a hermit crab, right? And uh, so uh, a hermit crab is really a plug and play add-on for a conventional controller. Uh, this uh, easily, uh, uh, connects to a conventional controller, what some people call uh, dumb controllers, but uh, it easily connects to a uh, conventional controller and gives the user the full ability to uh, manage uh, their controller now as a smart controller. Um, and this is great for uh, many reasons, but the first two that come to mind for me is uh, number one, uh, your conventional controller now is a controller can uh, have full uh, ET uh, capabilities. So uh, daily adjustments based on ET are going to happen uh, automatically now. Uh, uh, you also have remote management of this controller now, so you're no longer having to drive out, touch that controller to make, uh, make any adjustments. So it's really kind of fascinating to me as I think about the life cycle of uh, smart controllers. You know, when you think about a conventional controller, and uh, the way we've managed or our, our, you know, there's still a lot of conventional controllers out there. Uh, the, the way we are managing them is, um, you know, you set your, your baseline schedule to the hottest day of the year, you know, sometime in July. And, uh, and then you adjust uh, in the fall, you do your percent adjust, you turn it down to 75% in the uh, winter to 50% maybe off back in the spring up to 75 and then so four adjustments a year and uh, that was considered okay right so I know some of the water managers that are listening today are uh, much more busy than that right maybe uh, monthly uh, adjustments so 12 adjustments a year uh, and uh, and hardly anybody doing weekly but even if you were doing weekly it'd be 52 adjustments a year so we go to very basic pro programming like that to now today where uh, ET control do a daily adjustment of the ET water and hermit crabs uh, using Jane Unity are doing a daily adjustment based on hourly inputs of weather. So to go all the way from four, to four adjustments a year to daily based on hourly adjustments, uh, we've really come a long ways uh, when it comes to uh, water management. So uh, the, again, what is a hermit crab is the device that gives us the ability to uh, make these adjustments as well as uh, uh, manually make adjustments without having to go to the, uh, to the controllers as well. So um, I know a lot of people are thinking, gee, well, how does this happen? How do we actually do this? And part of what is happening is uh, through our um, uh, controller cable. And this uh, controller cable has some coding in it. It connects to the conventional controller. And that cable has to be specific to the controller. So uh, when 
for ordering a hermit crab or when you're getting ready to use a hermit crab, it's important to know which controller you're connecting to because there's going to be you a know, specialized uh, cable for that. The hermit crab then connects to using this cable, uh, any conventional controller up to four stations. So now if you've got a 24 station controller, got control of uh, 24 stations, but if you do have 48 all the way to 48. So whatever that conventional controller is capable of, that's what your hermit crab is uh, capable of as well. Uh, the hermit crab uh, comes in a very sturdy box. Uh, you can mount it uh, adjacent to the conventional controller. Uh, the cables run about two feet, so you do have to get uh, within about two feet, but there's no rip and replace out of the box installed into the remote port, you're talking maybe 10 minutes. So uh, really, you know, what, what I put in that um, uh, plug and play uh, category. Uh, and then the other thing is uh, you still have a standard connection for a rain sensor and a flow sensor. Now, I just want to touch on one thing right now because I, I and, and two things actually. One, um, you know, I, I just want to mention that for those of you who stay through the, uh, uh, totality of our presentation today, uh, we're going to have a really nice promotional offer about uh, the Hermit Crab at the end. Uh, and uh, for those of you who like free, I think you're, you're going to be really excited, right? But um, so, so when you think about a Hermit Crab and a conventional controller and a truly smart irrigation controller, one thing I know is on everybody's mind is, uh, is pricing. So first thing I want to say is um, a uh, Hermit Crab controller, once again, that would go to 48 stations, uh, we have a list price of $1,250 on it. Uh, and that's with flow control. If you need something without flow control, you're gonna pay $1,000. Now, again, you need a cable to connect. Most of those cables run about $80 for the cable. So uh, when you can compare this to, uh, let's just say a Hermit Crab with flow at $1,250 versus a uh, standard smart controller or a smart box from uh, from a uh, 48 station controller. You know the price on those is about $4,100. So you can see right there the uh, the, the savings that uh, that you gain by using a hermit crab. But the thing is, if I'm a contractor and I want to install hermit crabs on the jobs I'm managing, right? I'm no longer thinking about how do I uh, uh, sell this to my customers, but how do I make myself more productive? How do I uh, reduce my uh, labor so that I increase my margins? Think about installing these hermit crabs for my customers because number one, it makes me much more efficient about managing their landscape. And number two, I, if, if I'm off the job at some point, I can take these with me and move them to the next job. Very easy to do uh, and, and much easier than, than, than driving out and, and trying to make uh, uh, changes uh, uh, from, from, from my truck. So then if we think about the challenges that uh, you all as contractors are, are having today, uh, you know, these are the four that are really jumping out to me right now as, uh, as uh, key challenges and one, you know, labor. And this has been a problem for years, right? We've all been experiencing this labor issue and uh, gosh, I see that uh, unemployment or has or will shortly be jumping up to uh, 20%. I think, well, we should have a little bit more labor in the uh, landscape market. But at the same time, you know, I, I also know that you have to be pretty determined to work in the landscape industry. And uh, people who have maybe been working retail and, uh, and um, uh, restaurants, um, maybe aren't you know suited for it it's it's a hard job so uh, i think labor is still going to be a, a challenge for a lot of people and more importantly how you use that labor is going to be critical for for contractors uh, and then number two when i think about the training again if i can train my team on the uh, using the hermit crab connecting the hermit crab and then using the jane unity dashboard to manage the hermit crab I'm really only having to train and teach on one dashboard and one controller, right? When my labor is already short and I'm thinking about how do I train all these people and, uh, and then at the same time uh, uh, get them working, you know, there's a lot of pressure. So anytime I can ramp that up and, and make that easier, uh, I'm, I'm going to be better off. And then uh, I also think that water management is going to be critical to uh, your customers uh, going forward, especially in the summer. They're always going to be looking for ways to reduce the cost. You know, some of these 
large HOAs that you're managing are, are looking to reduce costs and uh, good water management is going to be important to them and uh, this provides uh, that service for you as well. Uh, and then, I mean, just looking at the transportation costs of uh, uh, team members out to, uh, to, to work on controllers is, is huge. So let's look at some of this labor savings, right? So if I'm not having to, and you know, it was because we were talking to a gentleman before the call started this in the Southeast right now, and gosh, Florida and the Southeast is having blistering hot temperatures. Uh, I talked to DJ, one of my teammates in Colorado yesterday, and he was saying, we've got six inches of snow here today. We've got heat in Florida, San Diego, where I am right now, we've had rain and sunshine and rain and sunshine and a lot of adjustments to a controller. Now, I could send a team out to make all these adjustments and that'd be very expensive to me or I could install some uh, uh, hermit crabs on my jobs and start to have this ability to remotely manage them without having to drive out, right? So I can, I can manage or change those controllers using any remote device, any laptop, desktop, iPhone, iPad, uh, I, I can do that. So, uh, so that's great, but even more important, if I'm now using ET data to uh, manage the time on the controllers, I'm going to actually have to make less uh, manual modifications. So. It's kind of a, a, a double uh, benefit there. Um, remember, the Hermit Crab also gives you full flow monitoring uh, capabilities. So when you get that line break or when you're getting that leak, the Hermit Crab's detecting it and alerting you, right? I used to have a saying in the, in the old days and it was if, uh, if we point out, the, uh, uh, as a contractor, if we point out the issue to the customer, then we can bill for it. If there's a mess that we haven't caught and the customer's pointing it out to us, chances are that's a repair we're going to be doing for free. So uh, detecting leaks and uh, closing master valves to prevent flooding is, uh, is huge. And that's something that uh, is all part of the uh, hermit crab cap uh, capabilities and functionality. Uh, and then lastly, you know, you're, you, and, and not lastly, but importantly, uh, you are going to be able to monitor your valve operations so that uh, you're alerted to potential issues before they happen. And uh, this is also uh, uh, very valuable uh, in, in, in the contractor game as well. So looking at, again, some of these transportation costs and another thing that motivates me as a contractor to want to install these on all my customers' jobs, uh, even if I'm paying for them, is, uh, is a transportation uh, cost. One of our, uh, one of my teammates, Greg Black, put this together for me. Uh, some cents a mile to operate a vehicle, and I actually think uh, it's uh, a little bit more than that, but 60 cents a mile to uh, operate my vehicle, plus my hourly that I'm paying my, uh, uh, my worker, my field worker to go out and, and make adjustments, uh, it starts to get pretty expensive. Well, Greg kind of put this slide together to put it a little bit more in perspective. You know, if you're driving out just to deal with uh, three different sites, three different controllers, and the driving distance was 10, 32, and five miles, and you were lucky enough to spend just 12 minutes, four minutes, and nine minutes on each site, right? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but my wife says sometimes it takes me that long to just find my controller key. But uh, so that, that's a pretty good period of time to be on a site. You add in the cost of, of gas per gallon, uh, your miles per gallon on your truck, whatever you're getting, miles you can drive in an hour. Uh, we're looking at, in this example of three, 94 total miles and with a, uh, a total cost of $146 just to go out to three sites and, uh, and, and change the, uh, or manually adjust or turn off controllers. It's a very expensive proposition to, uh, to go out and do that. Uh, and if you're doing it with any regularity, you know, you're incurring this cost uh, often and regularly with, uh, with little um, visible benefit to, uh, to your, um, customer. So think about the transportation costs, the savings you can get, and uh, uh, you know what that does. So uh, I just wanted to stop there a second, uh, Kevin, and uh, see if you had uh, anything to add at this point or any, any questions uh, that, that have come up at this point. 
Well, I guess uh, contractors, uh, I, I think, and, and you're about to get into this, and in that in terms of um, um, uh, compatibility, they'll ask then uh, how, how compatible then is it with the existing uh, conventional controllers and that the traditional controllers and that, that are out there? Okay, well, thank you. And I promise everyone this is completely unrehearsed. Uh, I didn't know that Kevin was actually going to ask that, but my next slide, you know, talks about the hermit crab uh, compatibility. And uh, this shows uh, many of the very popular controllers that the hermit crab attaches to. I think the number, uh, Kevin, you know, in more uh, specific terms is about 80%. Uh, and of that 20% that we don't connect to, uh, a lot of those are, for example, Rainbird Maxicom. And Rainbird Maxicom was very popular and is installed in a lot of places. We can't connect the hermit crab to that, but we do have a 50-pin replacement panel uh, that you can purchase as well and uh, pull the old Rainbird panel off and put the replacement panel on. And uh, that works great for converting uh, uh, Rainbird MaxiCom controllers to uh, ET water uh, controllers that uh, utilize uh, the new Jane Unity software. So conceivably, Richard, if you have a, a hundred properties in your portfolio and that, some of the properties have hunters, some have rainbirds and that, you could, you could put them all under the one, manage them all from, from your phone, all, the, on all these different models. Exactly, and only have to train your team on one software. Uh, we do have uh, remote management from a phone, right? The Jane Unity um, mobile. Uh, you can turn things on and off from your phone. Again, a dozen or 20 different uh, types of controllers all being pulled under one dashboard so that you train people once on how to use the da dashboard, how to make the adjustments, how to use the uh, mobile software device in the field and uh, really simplify water management for your teams. Really makes it easy, right? Because this is what really holds people up is, man, it's just too complicated. And oftentimes, you know, I know people will say, oh, I, I, I'm not familiar with that controller. I don't know how to really pro properly manage it. Well, we really eliminate that and put it all under uh, one dashboard and one software to learn. Good, thank you, Richard. Good. And is it really? I mean, is it is it, is it just uh, uh, is it really just one one cable? Yeah, it really is. It's uh, one cable, four screws, and uh, you're going to be on your way. So uh, that's uh, that's one of the uh, real uh, beauties of it. And um, that cable wires into most of the time the remote port. Uh, and you still keep your remote uh, capabilities with uh, now using your phone. And uh, it still uh, has full functionality for uh, flow uh, as well as rain sensors. So you're not really eliminating those key uh, ports. Um, and, you know, Kevin, I just put up this slide, uh, slide number eight. And, you know, I, I, I put this up for two reasons. One, I can talk all day long about the hermit crab and what it does and how, uh, uh, how well it works. Uh, but at the same time, if I put up some information from some customers, some uh, good contractors that have been using them and uh, they tout the benefits, I, I think it, it, it's more clear. And uh, I, I point this out for two reasons. One, I think it's important to know that uh, contractors are using the product and enjoying it. And number two, man, the value of testimonials in the landscape business for you contractors is really big. And, you know, working in a landscape industry uh, is an industry I just love and part of it is uh, because of the beauty we create. And so uh, you can use testimonials in your business uh, showing pictures, right? Uh, I remember one time uh, my, my wife telling me, why do, you, why do you spend so much time going to these conferences? Why don't you just show pictures of the great work you guys are doing? And uh, that, that picture is going to be worth a lot more than, than you telling somebody at a conference. And, you know, it, it's true. So, uh, so I put these testimonials out there. Uh, just so one, you can see examples and two, you know, see that we really are saving contractors money and, uh, and reducing their labor using uh, hermit crab controllers and, and you can too. Um, the other thing, you know, Kevin, that I just wanted to get into uh, as we get into, you know, step two where, uh, uh, you know, water management at the 200 level instead of the 100 level is 
Uh, you know, a, a few weeks ago, uh, I was doing some training for uh, uh, Master Gardeners in California. I was doing the irrigation training. And part of that training was how do you program a conventional controller? And I started to go through all the ramifications of what you need to do to actually program uh, sprinkler runtime uh, accurately. And I put the formulas up here and I, I started to look at this and I saw the faces of the students and I started to think about how tough this actually is, right? You're going to have to figure out things like uh, converting gallons per minute or gallons per hour to inches per hour. You need to know root depths, you need to know crop coefficients, precip rates, you need to know a lot to do this properly. And then after you know all that, you still have to be able to do the calculation. And uh, look, it's, uh, you know, maybe high school math, maybe in these It's still math that you have to do. And more importantly, it takes time to do so. We can, um, uh, with the Hermit Crab using the Jane Unity software, you can put it on a uh, setting and uh, we will use 17 factors of ET as well as um, predictive analytics and what's happening in the future. And we'll set a program for you. So it eliminates the need of putting down a baseline uh, program at all, which eliminates a lot of the challenges and uh, mistakes that can happen when you're doing that. And, uh, and this is going to give you time, and it's also going to uh, increase, the, um, increase the accuracy of your water management. So one, one quick for question these. for you, uh, Richard, uh, just from, uh, from the audience, and this, is, this is goes to compatibility. Uh, about, uh, there was a question about um, uh, her using Hermit Crab on two wire systems. Sure, so the Hermit Crab is uh, fully compatible with two wire controllers. Uh, once again, um, you know, there, there is a limit here and we go to 48 stations. I know some two wire controllers go higher than that, but there still is a lot of two wire controllers at 48 stations or less. So there's a lot of, uh, uh, this is applicable to a lot of jobs, a lot of job sites uh, using uh, two wire controllers. So th thanks, Kevin. Um, Thank you, Richard. Yeah. And so one of the real advantages of using uh, the Hermit Crab is being able to connect to the new uh, Jane Unity uh, software. And um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time today talking about Jane Unity software, but I am going to hit on five things that get me really excited about the new uh, Jane Unity software. And one I've already talked about a little bit, and that is the uh, scientific schedule developed specifically for your property. Uh, again, you're not having to set a baseline schedule that uh, uh, is uh, measured and adjusted uh, off or to, right? Because that baseline schedule that you set up or somebody else set up when you inherited the property could be just an incorrect schedule. So uh, we start from scratch. We set it to a, a setting that has a baseline schedule generated for us, uh, increases accuracy and, uh, and speeds the uh, installations. Um, then this whole concept of daily adjustments based on real-time ET um, calculated from 17 inputs on an hourly basis. Uh, that's all even hard to say. Uh, and when you think and, and try to comprehend the billions of calculations that are happening, you know, at, uh, at any one day at, uh, as a result of this, it's, it, it's really big. And so, uh, we feel that, you know, this is, this is industry leading. It's where others are going to want to be. And uh, it just increases that accuracy of uh, water management that, uh, that, that we really need going forward. Um, and then number three is the predictive analytics, right? Uh, in the old days or in these days for some, you know, you look at ET based on what happened in the past, right? I call it the autopsy, right? What has happened? And I set my, my schedule for the next day but we're really not doing full justice unless we're looking forward uh, a few weeks to see what's going to be happening in the future. And that's when we can really fine tune our adjustments. So we do have predictive weather analytics now that are looking forward and backwards is what has happened. We're looking forward as to what's going to happen tomorrow, cloudy day tomorrow, rainy day tomorrow. That's gonna change what I'm watering today. And now with the hermit crab, you get the ability to use predictive analytics as well. Um, 
You also get water management reporting uh, reports automatically delivered to you now on a, uh, on a weekly basis. You know, uh, we have raised the awareness of water management a whole lot over the years, but really when you start driving messaging on how much water you're using, how much water you used in comparison to other uh, uh, timeframes, and you are proactively driving this information to property managers, building owners, you know, you'll really start to get the meaningful conversations you need to get on, uh, on, on, uh, for, for water management. And then, uh, then finally, I think we have a really uh, unique and exciting user interface. Um, you know, we talk about the weather variables that go into our calculations and there's 17 of them now. We don't print all 17, but we show a good amount of those, maybe 10 or 11 on your dashboard now. So you can really dive into uh, weather analytics that are gonna keep people coming back to the software on a daily basis, raising their water uh, awareness, uh, water management awareness, as well as uh, being able to use some really sophisticated weather tools to schedule crews, kind of uh, schedule um, uh, route trends. And uh, so you'll be able to use it for a lot more than, uh, than just uh, water management. Well, Kevin, I just want to break there a second before I uh, go into my last two slides and see if there's any other questions we can uh, uh, answer right now. I'm watching the chats for you right now. And in terms of all this, this, uh, uh, this, this functionality, Richard, and that, I mean, is, is there any special setup involved, you know, once I, I plug the hermit crab in? Is, I mean, do, do I have to go through a, uh, how detailed is the configuration process? I mean, that's something that, that uh, we're usually asked about. Yeah, so uh, anybody who's known me, and you don't have to know me for very long to know I like simple. <laughs> you know, so I really like about the Hermit Crab or any of the ET water controllers uh, by Jane now is that uh, the simplicity in which it is to set them up. So uh, they wire up very easily uh, in the Hermit Crab's case, right? Wire it up, four screws, uh, turn it on, and when it connects, you get your serial number. You take that serial number, go to any uh, handheld device or computer, and you're able to enter that serial number in at our website uh, at, at the proper location, and it just steps you through the steps you need to take to set up your controller. The beauty of that is that you don't have to call customer service, you don't have to wait on, online or on with anyone else. Uh, it's just very easy to set up and, and connect to. That's great, thank you, Richard. Just looking now, just briefly, just checking. Uh, uh, I have a qu I have a question about does it connect to common wire? And if we mean, yeah, so your common wire is going to be connected to your host conventional controller already. So no, you're going into the remote port, or you're going into on on a couple of the configurations uh, uh, a, a different port. But um, no, we're we're not having to worry about that common wire. Good, thank you, Richard. That's all I see for questions at the moment. Okay. Okay, so, um, all right, so listen, um, I really appreciated everybody's attendance at, to our Lunch and Learns, and uh, in particular, you know, listening to ways that uh, hermit crabs can help your business, and, and hopefully motivating some of you into action uh, to uh, actually buy some of these uh, for yourself, not necessarily for your customers, but because it's going to make your business more efficient and uh, uh, and uh, uh, your uh, business more profitable. So uh, for those of you today, uh, we're going to offer a free hermit crab to attendees with a paid one year subscription. So you know earlier when I mentioned those prices, $1,250 for hermit crab uh, with uh, flow management, 1000 without flow, uh, it did include a one year subscription. We're going to, in this case, we're going to ask you to pay for the one year subscription, but we're going to give you one free hermit crab to test out. Uh, this offer is good through the end of the month, and it's really, you know, one per company. We just want to give you the easy ability to, to test it out. And then more importantly, we're going to have one of our team members help you uh, do an install and help you uh, uh, up the programming. And the reason we're doing that, right, is we're really committed to, in this season coming up, 
uh, reducing your labor costs and making things easier for you to manage. So we're willing to step out and, and help you do that setup so that you can learn appropriately and learn the right way right from the start. Uh, and hopefully uh, that will benefit you with every installation on down the line for years. So uh, uh, we, we have that available. And uh, you can just email sales at etwater.com to take advantage of this. Uh, we'll need things like your name, address, you know, ways to contact you, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll definitely need that and uh, we can reach back out to you and, uh, and uh, make that offer available to you. Um, so again, you know, as we're thinking about this summer season and uh, all, all, the, all the stress that uh, our landscapes are going to be taking, our personnel, our crews, uh, our, our lives, uh, we're always thinking of ways to simplify and to make ourselves more profitable. And man, uh, if there's a way I can help, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Here's my email address as well as my phone number. I've been a, been through a few of these summers uh, doing landscape maintenance, and uh, and uh, I, I really do want to help all of you because uh, uh, it's really where my heart is with the uh, contractors and the work they do. I really admire all of you, and I know how hard that work is. So I, I do want to help. So. Uh, with that, uh, Kevin, um, are there any more questions we have that we need to uh, uh, complete at the end here? Uh, just if, 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 Richard, if you could provide some information about the subscription of that request. Yeah, so uh, the subscription uh, for the Hermit Crab Controller is uh, 239 a year. And uh, gosh, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't mention this earlier, uh, but 239 annual subscription. And one thing, you know, water management and flow management uh, on a smart controller is really important to us because, you know, it's one thing to manage water with a smart controller and you get a lot out of that, but you really catch the big issues with flow control. And uh, it's the big breaks and catching that. And all of you have your uh, $30,000 a month water bill story from a break that occurred near a drain. Uh, we, we all have those, right? So uh, flow management is so big. And uh, I, I mentioned this because we really wanted to incent people to do flow management with their controllers. So our 239 annual includes flow management. And it's our way of saying, you know, uh, let's, let's uh, push this flow management uh, out to our customers and to our because it's really going to make the biggest uh, difference in water savings. That's great. Thank you, Richard. And then can we just, uh, just for clarification, as I see a question here in that, can we uh, talk about uh, the Jane Unity platform and sort of the interfaces, how you, how you work with uh, uh, connecting an ET water controller that, uh, that, that talks to talks to the, the Jane Unity and then uh, uh, gets its schedule. Yeah, so um, I'm not really sure what you're asking there, Kevin. Um, and I, I think uh, what the, uh, the uh, sorry, Richard, I think the question is, is, is related to, um, uh, is, is it, a, is it a, a, a mobile app or is, it a, is there difference, differences between what you use on the computer versus what you uh, would use on your phone in that in a, in a mobile application? Right, so the mobile application, right, is uh, so with Jane Unity uh, dashboard on a computer, uh, 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 laptop, uh, iPad, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's um, you get the full features and functions of the, uh, of the software, whether you're running it to a uh, ET Water uh, smart box controller or to a hermit crab. Uh, then the Jane Unity Mobile is, uh, is, uh, gives you the ability to make adjustments. It gives you ability to start and stop uh, uh, locations, but it doesn't give you the full functionality. Uh, so the interface on the phone uh, is more like a remote, but gives you uh, adjustments like uh, 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 so you can make remote adjustments in the field and the thing I like about the mobile software that you use that you don't find on the uh, desktop is uh, your different zones as you're doing your visual inspection so I can go in and I can say well gee I want to inspect all my shrub zones today that's three five and seven I'm going to turn them on for two minutes apiece and then I'm gonna go around and do my visual inspection and I can type notes 
into my visual inspection as I'm going. So that's one of the interfaces of the uh, mobile that I really, really like, and I think contractors can, can like. So hope that answered that question, Kevin. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. It's really, Hermit Crab is really fully set up once you plug in and, and uh, it, it makes a wireless connection automatically in that. And then you're really putting in your, your site information and your uh, soil type in that. You're, you're doing that online. So. Correct. Correct. So, okay. Well, again, I want to say thank you to everyone who joined us uh, this afternoon for our virtual Lunch and Learn. Uh, we're going to be back uh, Wednesday and Friday of next week. And uh, yeah, a little teaser in the future. But, uh, we're going to have a few designers on uh, talking about uh, specifics of design uh, for water conservation. Uh, and then uh, in, in the next few weeks, we're also going to have a, a panel discussion with uh, people from the industry. Uh, from distribution, manufacturing, and a contractor talking about how the pandemic or COVID is affecting business and what they're doing to change and, um, and manage through these uh, turbulent times. So again, thanks very much everybody for joining. I appreciate that. Uh, hope you have a great weekend and we'll catch up to all of you soon. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy. Yeah. And thank you, Kevin, for, uh, for taking on uh, my, uh, my, my duties there, my past duties. You're welcome, Richard. Thank you for having me. All right. All right, good job, thanks.